This is fiberglass, and this is carbon fiber. Now, of course, everyone loves the look of carbon fiber, but they want the low cost of fiberglass. Now, in a lot of components that I've seen around, as well as a lot of tutorials I've seen on YouTube lately about making fiberglass parts, people seem to wrap a few layers of fiberglass with a final layer of carbon fiber. Now, some say it's just for the looks, but I've seen quite a lot quote that it is for the strength of carbon fiber. But in reality, if you're targeting the optimal strength to weight ratio for your composite structure, the last thing you want to be doing is wrapping it in a layer of carbon fiber. And in this video, I'm just going to quickly go through and explain why that's the case. Now, what it really comes down to is the difference in the stiffness between the two materials. Now, I suggest that you watch my video on carbon fiber versus Kevlar versus fiberglass, which talks a lot about their material properties. But what I've done is I've lifted a few of those properties here to talk to you about. So these are basically properties that are representative of two off the shelf things. So there's the carbon you buy off the shelf and the e-glass you buy off the shelf. Nothing exotic, there's just straightforward stuff. Now, what I've done is I'm going to assume that all the fibers are running parallel. So we're not assuming chop strand glass. So just a quick run through our properties. Carbon is weaker than e-glass ever so slightly. It is much stiffer, so it breaks at an earlier point. So carbon, you can stretch it for 1.4% of its total length before it snaps. Glass, you can stretch for about 5% before it snaps. Carbon is less dense, 1.8 to 2.54, which is what gives it its superior strength to weight here um, by a little bit. And because of that less density, its sheet thickness on a 100 grams per square meter sheet means that it's got a 0 0.055 millimeter sheet thickness as opposed to a 0 0.0394 millimeters. Now, why did I pick 100 grams per square meter? It's just going to make my calculations easier. Let's say that we have our composite surface. Now, for the sake of calculation purposes, I'm just going to do a basic sample layout. So let's go three layers of fiberglass of 100 grams per square meter, and then we'll coat it with one layer of carbon fiber on the top. Now, firstly, we can see the immediate problem starting to form. This carbon fiber here will break when this whole assembly stretches to 1.4% longer than it is right now. So when it's at 101.4% of its current length, that carbon is going to snap, regardless of if the fiberglass is even close, because the carbon cannot physically stretch anymore, whereas the fiberglass wants to keep stretching. Imagine if you put a rubber band on the outside of a piece of aluminium and bent it. The rubber band's not going to take any force at all. So the rubber band in our case is the fiberglass. You could break that carbon fiber long before you break the fiberglass just by pulling it. What does this mean numerically? Well, if we look at a stress-strain plot of our materials, which is basically the force we apply to the material on this axis versus how far it stretches on this axis, we've got our fiberglass, and we'll come up here and we'll break here, and then we'll get our carbon fiber. Now I'm going to do this on a strength to weight basis because of course we're talking strength to weight here. So carbon fiber has effectively a higher strength, but it still extends exactly the same amount. Okay, so this is still gonna be 1.4% and that's still gonna be 5%. It doesn't matter how many layers of carbon you put here. You put 500 layers of carbon, it's still gonna snap at 1.4%. You can put 500 layers of fiberglass, the fiberglass is still only gonna snap at 4.8% of the stretching. So as we move along here and apply our force, we reach here, the carbon breaks, and then the fiberglass has to take the load for the duration of it. Now what does that mean? That means that your fiberglass, the second that carbon layer breaks, is taking 100% of the load. So you, you've broken your carbon, it's all transferred to the fiberglass, means the carbon fiber isn't actually doing anything at this point. We have basically just created a split in this carbon here, and therefore, because this has essentially been removed from there to there, all the load is here. So effectively, what we've achieved there is we now just have a three fiberglass layer structure. It's like the carbon was never even there in the first place to start with. Running some numbers, let's say we have a 10 millimeter wide area that we're making out of this composite. So we multiply that by 10 to get our total area of carbon. So we have 0 0.556 millimeters of carbon. And then we multiply our fiberglass by 10, and then we multiply it by our three. So that will give us 1.182 millimeters of actual fiberglass. So this isn't including, including the resin, this is just the fiberglass itself. So these will both have a respective strength. So if we can imagine these two laminates as individually, the carbon will take a total of 1,724 newtons and the fiberglass will be able to take a total of 4,074.4 newtons. Now, of course, 
Most people would just be like, oh yeah, those are the strengths. Add them together, that means we get about sort of 6,000 newtons of strength. But as I explained before, you add these two together and you actually still just end up with 4,000 newtons of strength before it breaks. So that's about 400 kilos of tensile load. So adding that carbon hasn't done anything for your strength. All it's done is just add more weight onto your part. If you're gonna do composites properly, you gotta match your elongations correctly. There is no point laminating carbon fiber with fiberglass. You're better off matching it with something that's much closer on stiffness. There's a good reason at the amateur level to keep all your composites homogenous because then you know you have matched stiffness and you know what properties you're getting. Don't mix and match unless you really know what you're doing. Of course, what's interesting to note here is that if the stiffer material is the one that is stronger, the less stiff material will actually help it. So if you imagine if these numbers were reversed and we had three layers of carbon fiber and one layer of fiberglass, the layer of fiberglass would still be helping out the carbon fiber. So let's say that the carbon fiber had 4,000 newtons ultimate tensile strength and the fiberglass had 1,700 newtons. Then combine some because we'd be like halfway on this curve, you'd look at that, you'd be like, oh yeah, okay, that's using a third of the fiberglass total strength. So we'd say that that's probably about 500 newtons that the fiberglass is contributing to it and 4,000 of that. So in the end, you'd end up with 4,500 newtons if this laminate was reversed. The key thing to note here is make sure that your stiffest material with the least elongation is the strongest thing of your laminate and therefore the last thing to fail because then at least the other parts of the laminate will help it out along the way. So if you had like five layers of carbon with one layer of fiberglass, that's totally cool. It's not the most efficient structure, but it's definitely a lot better than the other way around. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video informative. If you liked it, don't forget to check out my channel and my other videos and leave a comment below if you have anything that you'd like to have investigated. Hopefully, see you next time.